Well, it's the next morning. Getting all my job done. Little guy and I are out here feeding the animals. There's little guy. That's off. So I use this green cart. I made a review about it last year. We picked it up at Tractor Supply. And I'll tell you, I feed those cows way down there. Let me show you how far I go. So here's the barn. I'll turn slow to not make you dizzy. So here I feed the female cows and the calves. Go down there, way down there. That's about half as long as our driveway. So that's about 200 feet from the barn. Maybe 300. Anyways, when you're carrying lush green bales that are, you know, 50, 60 pounds a piece, that's a long ways to carry them. So this cart, I can load up four high and get them down there all in one jaunt. And because the tires are so fat, it goes through the snow really well, unless it's slushy snow where it's sticking to the tires. So see here, I've got three high. That's the back of the handle for a fourth. A lot of times, the kids will sit on top of it when I have two or three high. Doing all this with one hand. I had to take my glove off. So the cows are real happy. Today is their first day on this dry good hay. This is stuff that we put up in July that we've been selling to our customers. It's kind of time to start going into our own reserves that we had put away for hay sales to make sure that we have enough for the cows because if it is a long winter and you get a late first cutting, you can't go running out. That happened to us a couple of years ago with just in general our own bad timing and we know we've always got our bad timing. So he made his arrangements today uh, for the round baler to come over. He's over doing some hay raking this morning already. But unfortunately, if you can see the sky above me, a bit of a mist started about 10 minutes ago. And I just don't know. You know, it's different when you're making hay to put up and save or to feed right away. So I may end up having to feed all that and kind of go through the same thing. But these bulls, with these steers in here, with saw. Uh, Actually, two bulls and four steers, different batches that we got, and then you know, chocolate's our main breeding bull. But they are happy to be eating this. See, little guy knows the routine, he just hops on, pulls a ride up the hill. Their dad was out here for the dinner feeding last night, and Bethany and George are trying to get on. He's like, No, it's uphill, walk. She says, But mommy does it. That's why mommy loses weight and thins down. Of course, lately, oh my gosh, this cold weather hits and I get in the mood for baking. And we've been baking cookies and brownies and breads about every other day because it's been so cold. And it doesn't take much to warm up our house and turning the oven on. So, the animals are fed and they're happy. But now I gotta start thinking about the rest of the day. So it's starting to sprinkle, and we were talking about blowing off this hay vine and getting it put away. And we realized that there is a center post in our old sugar shack in the woods, so it's not gonna fit in there. And when we did the tear down and repair on that gearbox, I said then at least it should have been blown off with the air compressor and get all that seed out of there so that it doesn't grow and sprout in it and cause bus problems. Well, Guess what? It's starting to sprinkle again. It's not really letting up. So I want to blow out and brush off anything I can. And that little project kind of showed me. Just fiddling around with it that day when he was greasing it and getting it ready and showed me where all the grass and stuff kind of like stick. But, you know, I didn't really want to power wash it. It's going to freeze tonight. So 
I thought at the least I could blow it off and see the wire rust and stuff out of the pipe area so it can get put away because we just don't have a big, big storage barn. The trouble with like this pool barn is the only entrances are on the side where if they would have put a door on the end, it would have opened up the building at least another four feet in height. The part that we put the garage door on, the part that we put the door on last winter is about uh, to the two, two feet shorter than the rest of this because it was an addition that was added later. So, you know, it's always something that we could think about later on. The trouble is, with a front entrance and with a side entrance, look at this. All these leaves collect right in front of that door, and the minute you open the door, it all blows inside. I never did get this painted, and you know what? It's going to be 40 degrees today. It's going to be bad just to hit it with a paper can and... And I don't want to get overspray on the mower. It's actually our father and my father in law's mower. He doesn't seem to mind when I wash things and fix things up, but I always want to check about painting things. It's just a cool guy. There's parts of it I can't even reach. And I'll tell you something my parents taught me is that if you're going to borrow something, return it in better condition than when you borrowed it. So, like, if I borrow my father-in-law's vehicle for something, I generally will take the time to either wash it or vacuum it out. Because he's a farmer and he works full-time also, there's no time for things like vacuuming out your car. And now that we've got the shop back all going, it's always nice to have somebody do that for you. So I've got this washing brush and it's really tough. So I'm going to use this to clean out the blades up front. Now you can see all this grass on the ground was stuck right in those blades. And you know, you don't want to get your hands stuck on those because it is bad to get cut. We actually had our sickle bar at one point and my husband didn't have it attached the way that he normally does. It was kind of a lesson, a uh, safety lesson for him, and he cut his hand right down the side. I'm going to see if I can't brush some more out of this just to loosen it up before I blast it all with the air compressor. Because that's the part that really got bad, it just was packed in mud uh, from rain. There is a 90% chance of snow tonight starting at 1 a.m. But it's 42 degrees uh, for the high today and 40 degrees right now. I just figured it would be better dry brush and use the air compressor to get out as much of everything as I can so that we're not dealing with mud and frozen dirt later on. of which it is time for winterizing. We've been going through all the tractors and making sure that they have the proper amount of antifreeze in them or to drain them out if they're not running, if they're full of water because, you know, 
things happen. Um, we know he's got uh, some engine repair that needs to be done on the one tractor and it's going to sit for the winter. I believe it had uh, head gasket trouble, I'm not real sure. But he's been running it full of water, so we drained it all out. And it's nice to have things ready to go and not cause more problems with freezing. I learned that a lot a long time ago with my appliance repair. People were leaving washing machines out in freezing temperatures, but that drain and the pump becomes plastic and it will expand when it's packed full of water, freeze and crack, and then cost me $200 for a new pump. That was the most common repair that I had to do with the washers and dryers because people were moving and then they would get to their new place even overnight it would freeze. So I've learned a lot of things about winterizing equipment. So what do you do to get your equipment ready where you live for winter and freezing temperatures if you have them? You hire it out to be washed? I saw on another channel that there are services that just do like farm machinery and equipment washing. I don't know if there's anything like that around here, but you know us, we never hire anything done. It's all on me. He runs the equipment. I kind of help maintain it. I do all the washing and painting. This stuff is packed in there, oh my. I don't know how well you can see this, but when I started, you couldn't see the tops of these bolts and nuts. Oh man. That's a good inch and a half to two inches deep. The good thing about doing this now, I'm able to check for any broken blades, any broken guides, and it'll all get greased and be ready for pull out for next season. Better? It's still there. <laughs> Boy, I wish my kitchen was this clean. I don't think you'll be able to see any of this unless I can go through and lighten it. But I've got almost a full load on the manure spreader. I'm at about 40 bales right now. I'd like to get these last three or four to balance my load. But I made a little dent. Well, there wasn't much we could do. It got late, it got cold. And the truck wouldn't start so we came out in the morning that snowstorm it said one to three inches all the local radar said one inch 
Guess what? It was an absolute blizzard. It held off a little bit and it didn't start until about 4.30 in the morning. So it was way late, but it was way worse. That weather band, they were off by miles and miles across our state. Here's my hay bales. We came out in a blizzard and worked through the blizzard. It wasn't even supposed to be snowing in the morning. We figured, ah, one inch, we'll just roll the bales over and knock it off. I filled this whole trailer with the help of my husband. He picked him up from the field, knocked the snow off, had to lift him up onto the back of this truck. This is the same truck from the hay video. I got it all filled up again. 13 rows, and it is, I think we figured out 36, well, I thought it was 36 bales a row. It's actually 30 bales a row. Oh. All filled up. So, oh, a good way to do it, we figured out. Stay in the middle of the field. I don't know if I can pull this car back. I've been two days doing chores without my sled, and I've been using the kids' snow sled. Nope, <laughs> not gonna be able to pull that car back. So, we'll just park it back here. He'll find it. Anyways, we worked in the blizzard. We got the trailer full. It was a lot slower going that way instead of doing the stack wagon, which I absolutely hate. I thought maybe we'd do the stack wagon. It got too cold and the bales wouldn't pick up. So we resorted to doing it this way. Totally blew our plans. We got downhill. This is as far back in the field. I'm right at the edge of the woods. And he maneuvered through here. It would not go through. Now, that farm, that farm truck doesn't much leave the farm. And the tires aren't great. It did have snow chains on it, but we could have used another set of snow chains and they were sitting at the post office. I gotta grab a glove here. Not worth getting frostbite on my hands to hold the camera up. So I wanted to come out and pick up my sled because I've been two days doing chores without it. And using the kids' snow sleds, they're not as wide, so they can't hold more than one bale without tipping and falling. And they're not wide enough, so they're tippy anyway. I can hold three or four bales with this, and it pulls so easily. Well, those blizzard conditions, our area, the news said seven to nine inches. The ground was still warm because we didn't have enough cold days before the snow hit. So basically, as we were driving on it, it was turning to like packed slush underneath the tires. He could not get a grip to get that out of there. And he said, well, it was five o'clock. It was almost dark. We'd picked up bales for five hours. We got half the field picked up and in that trailer. The bale counter was off. He says it needs to be adjusted. He'd been fiddling with it the last couple of loads. But the only way we're going to get him out of there right now is to get this ground hard and cold with a second set of chains that are now in on another trailer. So the other trailer, I've got about 35 bales left the first cutting. So I'm going to unload those in the barn. Hopefully today, if not tomorrow, he's got power steering trouble on his work truck. It's holding him up. And with the short daylight hours, I don't think this is going to really get got to today. The alternative plan is to use that manure spreader, come out and get a load at a time. But I figured out it's got to be seven to ten loads pulling it out of the field with that and the trouble is if there's trouble it's me and Trey 
and I thought it might be better off waiting for the husband and let him sit there for a day or two. Now there's less snow on each individual bale at this time. Maybe it'll thaw out and get a little better. That's as far as we got on our hay for this unexpected, expected snow. It was just way more than we thought, way more than the weather was forecasted, and now we're in a pinch. The good thing is, we knew it would be cow hay, but sometimes you're just dealt with what you're dealt with. So I didn't want to run into the situation of running out of hay in the spring, and that was the purpose of getting this cutting. I just hated to leave any hay standing in the field. It's mature grass. The grasses are brown, the alfalfa is green, the low grass is green. It's going to be edible for cows. I guess if at later on in the winter any animals are without, they would eat it. Holy great big paw print. I don't know what that is. Look at this. Maybe it's two deer footprints together. I only saw four. Nothing but deer prints around everywhere else, so it's got to be two prints put together. So, whew. The good thing is about it, I got online, I checked out the hay prices at the auction. They were going up to ten sixty a bale for the good hay, and as a minimum, of two and three dollars for poor first quality hay. It never really tells you what it is, but I will tell you, holy man, people don't want to feed their animals this winter. They had pigs for fifteen dollars, uh, rabbits and chickens for as low as fifty cents, with a high going out at five dollars on the rabbits. So if you're just starting out homesteading, you want a little something to go and take care of in the winter. You can get a little bit of small livestock. Even goats were 25 to $50, which is real cheap for our area. They were usually more in the $100 range. Winter homesteading can sure be tough. Winter farming needs to just be done in Michigan for this time of year. But as we were baling the hay in the morning, corn trucks were going by trying to get the last of their fields harvested and the combines are still going. Everyone around here, wet, wet conditions. Everyone is just doing everything they can to get it wrapped up. So I'm going to get the rest of my hay lined up for these cows for the day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.